Hi guys. Hope you're having a great VBS week. Um, we are at our last day today, day three. Hope you've really enjoyed yourself. Hope that it's been fun and I hope that you've learned a lot. Um, before I jump into our last hero instruction, um, go ahead and have your parents look at the bottom of the instruction sheet that you got in your VBS kit. The last paragraph tells them that they need to that they need to make an appointment to come take your pictures with your capes on with your masks that you made um, at our hero of the kingdom photo booth so this is our studio that will turn into a photo booth and you can come and make an appointment safely by yourself to come take pictures with your capes and masks on. Hope you um, take an opportunity to do that. Okay, let's get into our last instruction. Here is our Bible. Most of our stories will come from the book of Acts again. So, um, like we said, Old Testament's in the beginning, New Testament tor is toward the back, excuse me. Um, and the fifth book of the Bible, of the New Testament is the book of Acts, okay? And that is where we're going to get most of our stories today. Okay, remember that only a short time, picking up from yesterday, only a short time has passed since Jesus was crucified. Many people followed him because Christians, I'm sorry, let me start over. Many people followed him and became Christians. A Christian is a follower of Jesus. However, the same people who hated him and had him crucified on a cross, they were still in control. These were the Jewish leaders who felt threatened by the Christians, which is the church. We we're going to, uh, they were going to, they were going to stop the church no matter what. And the Romans didn't care about their religion because to them, Caesar was God. Um, Caesar was their emperor. So we have the Jewish um, group who was threatened by the Christians, threatened by Jesus. And we have the Romans who didn't even really care because they saw um, Caesar as emperor as their God. Okay, so that's setting the scene. Shortly after the church was established on the day of Pentecost, we talked about that on our first night where the mighty wind came in through the room and there was um, fire over their head that gave them the ability, empowered them to be able to speak many different languages. Um, shortly after the church was established on that day, the Jews began persecuting Christians persecuting means making them suffer and sometimes even killing them we see an example of this in acts chapter 8 verse 1 they were doing this in the city of jerusalem so guess what the christians decided they were going to move and leave so they moved out they moved out through the greater region of judea and then even further into samaria Stephen, or Stephen, however you want to say it, a leader in the church in Jerusalem was stoned to death. And a young Pharisee, that means teacher of the Jewish law, his name was Saul, witnessed the stoning and approved of it. Saul then set out on a mission to destroy the church and went from house to house arresting Christians. He even went to the high priest and got letters to arrest Christians in the city of Damascus. Why is this a big deal, do you ask? Damascus? Who cares? What is Damascus? It's a big deal because Damascus was 135 miles away. What did he care about the Christians who were 135 miles away? He was on a mission to persecute Christians. That's why. All right, next page. Hold on. As you can see, Saul hated Christians and was out to destroy them. But God had plans for him, and even if it was going to take a miracle, God was going to show him that Jesus was the Messiah, which means Savior. Acts 8, remember our book, 
tells us that Saul traveled to Damascus. A bright light shone around him and he fell to the ground and heard a voice. Cue my picture, my first picture for today. There is Saul. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He responded, who are you, Lord? He didn't know who it was. There was a bright light. He had no idea. And the voice said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Saul was taken back and asked what he should do. He was taken back by all of this. He was like, whoa, Jesus, this is the guy I hate. Whoa, what do I, wow, what do I do? You're speaking to me. Because of the bright light from heaven, Saul was blind. So the men who were traveling with him had heard the voice too, and they led him by the hand to Damascus to a man named Judas, to his house, and he lived on Straight Street. Then in the meantime, while that is happening, um, Jesus then went to spoke to Ananias, another man who lived, a Christian who lived in Damascus, where Saul was going and told him to go see Saul. Hold on, here's the thing, plot twist. Ananias knows of Saul's reputation. Ananias knows that Saul hates Christians. Ananias is a Christian. And he's like, you want me to go where? Talk to who? Okay, so Ananias asked God if he knew what he was doing. Yeah, I sometimes do that too. <laughs> <laughs> but God always knows what he's doing. So God told him, go for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, before kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And this is found in Acts 9, 15 through 16. OMG. God chose an enemy, not a king, not a rich person, not a celebrity. He chose Saul, an enemy of Jesus. That shows us how great God is and how great his love is. That he can choose someone, that he can love someone so much to empower them for his kingdom. He should have used anyone but Saul, but he chose Saul. That's amazing. Okay, next picture. So, so Ananias obeyed. He obeyed God and went to Saul and he laid his hands on him and then Saul received his sight again. And then he believed that Jesus was the Savior and he was also baptized. He realized the truth and he was no longer an enemy of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And he wasn't an enemy anymore of the Christians. After being baptized, he immediately began preaching about Jesus because Jesus had done something wonderful in his life. He had saved him. Only a miracle could have taught Saul about Jesus. And that's exactly what happened. All right, last page, hold on. Once he began to believe in Jesus, he changed his name to Paul because he was now a new person. In Galatians 1:17, Paul tells us that after his baptism, he went to Arabia where he stayed for three years before going back to Jerusalem and meeting the apostles. Since um, starting in Acts 13, we begin to learn about Paul being sent on missionary journeys to teach the Gentiles the gospel. So missionary journeys is when he travels and teaches people about Jesus all over the place. Um, da -da -da -da. He teaches the gospel, which means the good news that Jesus is the savior. In Acts 15, we see that he traveled to many cities in the Roman world and also healed people like Peter. He was also empowered 
to do great miracles, just like we saw in Peter, just like we saw in the other apostles also. He started many churches, meaning he, he found groups of people in different cities and he taught them about Jesus and they became Christians and they started meeting together and that is what a church is. So he would go from town to town to town and he would do that. He would start little congregations of the church in each different town. Um, here's the thing. He started many churches in different cities, but he was also arrested like Peter. He was also stoned. He was run out of towns, but he continued to preach. Here's our final picture for tonight. Paul finally ended up in a jail in Rome where he spent many years. But while he was there, he did not waste time and the Holy Spirit empowered and inspired him to write letters to the churches he had started. We still read those letters today. And here's the cool thing. See this Bible? Okay, we've already talked Old Testament, but we're going to the New Testament, okay? Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, I should have had it marked. Here's the New Testament. The first four books of the Bible are the story of Jesus's life. We call them the Gospels. Remember the good news? Okay, and then after the first four books, we, we get into the Acts of the Apostles. That's why it's called Acts. All right, and right after Acts, the book following Acts is the book of Romans. Guess what that is? That is a letter from Paul to the little church in Rome that he had started. Not only did he start a church in Rome, he had a church uh, that started in Corinth, Galatia, Ephesus. Um, I don't know how to say Colossians. Anyways, he had written these letters that we find in the Bible. Okay, so Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, he also wrote a letter to his friend Timothy. And that's where we get the books 1st and 2nd Timothy. And we see these books here today. Okay. These books are like gold. They really are like gold. Okay. They teach us and guide us on who Jesus is and who the church is. Paul changed all of history through his life and through his books all because he allowed God to choose him, okay? And to empower him through the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we can go through hard times just like Paul, but God can do amazing things in our life and through, and through us if we let him. He can help us overcome and he will use that hard time in our lives to bless us and bless others just like he did with Paul if we let him. So heroes, remember you too have been chosen. Now your job is to believe God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit have the power to work in you and empower you to work for the kingdom, to change the world. I hope you have had a great time in VBS. VBS was a labor of love, has been a labor of love, put on by so many people. It takes so many people doing all of the gifts that they're good at to get something like this going. And why do we do this? Because we love you. We love you so much. And we really want you to know Jesus and what he has done for you in your life. So, last point. Ready? Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, at Baldwin Park COC. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Parents, that is where you're going to find your sermons. Um, that is where you're going to find Bible class. We have live classes on Sunday mornings um, in three languages, English, Spanish, and Chinese. Uh, Wednesday evenings, we have an adult Bible class also that's live. Um, and if you can't catch it live, they're saved there. So subscribe to our um, uh, YouTube channel, which is Baldwin Park COC. And check out our website, baldwinparkcoc.org. Um, we would love to hear from you. Hope you had a great time at VBS. Can't wait to hear from you. Bye.